I know that I'm loved and I know that the people in my life care about me, but it's hard. And I've been struggling with the compound not working as well. Um, and my weight loss has really slowed down, you know? Good morning. Forgive my voice and the background. Still recovering from COVID. Anyway, I wanted to kind of let y'all know what's going on. Um, if you've been around since I started the semaglutide compound, you know I have had struggles with this sublingual rapid dissolve, rapid dissolve tablet since I got them. Because I got a discount for buying a 90-day supply, I bought three months without having ever tried it, which I don't recommend doing if you're trying the rapid dissolve for the first time. Get one month, make sure you're good with it, and then buy more. Um, I called the pharmacy this morning because I only have the one I'm taking this morning and then I have two more left. I called them to switch back to the subdermal. Um, they have to call my doctor because the prescription she wrote was specifically for the rapid dissolve, which is a different dosage. So they're going to call her and get the authorization to switch me to the subdermal and then they're going to call me back to go over the pricing. I'm just going to do one month first because at this point, honestly, I feel like it feels like the compound has completely stopped working. This weekend, I... I mean, granted, I was also battling with COVID, but like, and even in my trip in California, uh, granted, when I was in California, I had a lot of activity that I'm not used to. I'll link that video here if you're interested. It, there was a lot of activity, but I felt like my hunger was not being curbed at all. Like I was thinking about food constantly and this weekend I was as well. So I'm just kind of frustrated at this point with the performance of the compound. And again, I'm not sure if that's because... I took a compound that was left out of the fridge all week. I know Wegovy is fine out of refrigeration for up to 28 days, but I didn't check with the pharmacy before I did that because um, I took my pill with me to California. So it wasn't out for quite a week, but you know, like six days or something like that. So we're going to try the subdermal and see if I feel like that is working closer to the way Wegovy was for me. And if it's not, then I'm either going to need to look for another compounding pharmacy I'll probably scour the support groups and check for people in the Texas area that are on a compound that they're having success with um, because I feel like, I, I just feel like it's not working. So we're going to hope that it's just the sublingual and that by going back to the injection, I won't have as many unknowns and that it will just work better for me, but we won't know until we know, right? So anyway... I'm gonna, I already crushed up my pill. This is what I've resorted to with the sublingual. I went ahead and I crush up the pill and I stick it underneath my tongue with some water and I hold it under there for five minutes. And then I swish it around and I swallow it and it tastes awful and it leaves sores underneath my tongue. And so I'm not a fan. And we've been doing this for almost three months at this point. So we are on week 34 and it is the 10th week of the sublingual compound. So I'm hoping that they will hear back from my doctor's office quickly and that we can get back on the subdermal maybe as early as next week. The weight loss has really, really slowed down since I switched to the compound. Um, when I was on my last month of week over the 2.4, I lost over 10 pounds. And since then, I've slowed down to less than five pounds a month when I switched over to the compound. So granted, there have been other things that have happened, but I had other things that happened when I was on Wegovy and it didn't affect my weight loss as much as it has since I started the compound. So, you know, it's a journey. It's not linear. It took me a long time. Well, I wouldn't say it took me a long time to gain the weight. I've been at this weight for a very, very long time. So I just keep trying to remember myself, remember myself. I just keep trying to remind myself how far I've come up to this point and that even though things have slowed down, giving up and just going back to where I was at this point just isn't an option. I need to remain focused and just be okay with the fact that things are going slower right now and eventually they'll ramp back up again. It's just kind of the way of things, like it's the cycle. So I feel like once I get down to the bottom of the compound thing, everything else will kind of hopefully fall back into place because right now mentally I'm just not in as good of a spot as I was when I was on the Wegovy. And I haven't been since I switched. So anyway, <laughs> I knew this was going to be a rough week because I'm still not feeling the greatest from the COVID. And 
I, I haven't grocery shopped or meal planned for this week at all because this weekend I was just exhausted. I'm still exhausted, but I just don't have the luxury of just sitting around. I have too much stuff I need to get done. So we're just going to keep on keeping on. We're going to push through and I'm going to get it done this week. I hope you guys are having an awesome week and I will talk to you soon. Hey guys. So just wanted to come on and have a little bit of a chat with you. I've been kind of grinning and bearing it the last couple of days. If you didn't see last week's video, I was, um, I tested positive for COVID last week and I'm still kind of recovering. I'm feeling much, much better, but if you've had COVID, you know that the fatigue kind of lingers for a while. And Saturday was my birthday and we had plans, but of course, when you test positive for COVID, that's not a thing. So. I'm kind of the person in my friend group who is always the one that's planning everything for everybody. And I mean, if you saw the baby shower, you know kind of the stuff I do. Like my sister is that person like times a million. Um, I'm nowhere near the level that she is, but you know, I always want to make people feel special and loved. And it's not that people in my life don't want to make me feel special and loved. It's just, I have time that people don't have because I, you know, I do YouTube and I've been studying Python for a career change for the last couple of years. And so like, I don't have a nine to five job. Sorry, there's a lot of flies out here today. I don't have a regular nine to five job that I have to go to every day. I don't have an infant to take care of, you know? So usually when it comes time for my birthday, you know, if anything, we go out to dinner. My husband asks me if I want a present. I usually tell him no. If anything, he'll usually buy me something for the kitchen because I love to cook. And, you know, we're now in a place in our lives where we're staying in apartments because we invested in a piece of land many years ago that has been an ongoing legal battle and we have no idea when that will or will not end. Um, so we may never actually get to build our house. <laughs> and so buying a bunch of kitchen stuff when you live in a teeny tiny apartment, it's not really you know, I've already got too much kitchen stuff for the size of the kitchen that I have. So, you know, asking for more kitchen stuff just seems silly. And I mean, I guess I could have them buy me clothes, but I mean, I'm going to hopefully size out of them soon. So I don't really want to spend a significant amount of money on clothes. So for the first time in a long time, I had told him that, you know, for my birthday, I didn't want to have to plan my own birthday. I don't want to have to, you know, be the one that plans everything and, and all of that. And so he was planning this karaoke night with all of our friends and then I tested positive for COVID and of course that can't happen and we have a lot of stuff going on the next several weeks so like I don't know that that's we're going to be able to make that up and and then Sunday he ended up having to go out of town so I was by myself and I was really struggling with just feeling alone and I know that I'm loved and I know that the people in my life care about me, but it's hard. And I've been struggling with the compound not working as well. Um, and my weight loss has really slowed down, you know? And so this weekend I kind of fell into some bad habits again, where I was like, it's my birthday. I'm going to do what I want and I'm going to eat what I want. And Unfortunately, with the calm down not working as well as the week over, I really was kind of able to do that. I mean, I didn't go as far off the wagon as I would have, you know, seven, eight months ago. But, you know, I definitely ate when I wasn't hungry. I definitely ate too much. I wasn't tracking anything still because I haven't tracked anything since we left for California. And I planned to get back on the wagon as soon as I came back. But then I got diagnosed with COVID and it's just, I had no energy for anything. Um, so cooking was not a thing. So we were just, I was just eating whatever I could get my hands on. And I'm just kind of, I've been white knuckling it the last several days. Yesterday, I finally sat down and actually put together a meal plan for this week. And I'm going to go grocery shopping today. But I'm just, honestly, if it were if it weren't for you guys, if I didn't have this channel holding me accountable, there's a good chance that this weekend I would have just said screw it and just falling completely off the wagon and completely undone the last eight months worth of progress. I'm not 
I'm not quite that far anymore. Like I'm feeling a little bit better, but I just wanted to come on here and say that if you've had moments where you wanted to give up, I get you. I'm there. But we're gonna get through it. Look who it is! Ah! So anyway, we're, we're having a delayed breakfast, lunch, no. Okay. A delayed birthday lunch? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> Because we were supposed to have birthday lunch when I came back from California, but then COVID. But today we're going to get sushi. Because our favorite sushi place has been closed for over a year. Yeah. Now we're going to go eat sushi. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay. Hey guys. So we made it to the end of week 34. <laughs> Kind of an up and down one. Um, I apologize for the sound and the Nikki clip. She wanted to share her birth story with you guys, but after Abby started fussing and she got in the back seat, like you couldn't see her face, it was almost impossible to hear her voice. If you're interested in hearing more details about her birth story, please let me know down in the comments, and maybe we'll we'll do like a, a repeat with her. So Saturday, I went to go see Jurassic Park with a couple of friends of mine. And I did my nails for it because why not? Um, <laughs> anyway, it was fun. And um, we did we did have a really good time. It really helped to kind of lift my spirits to be around people and just, just enjoy being with people, doing fun things. I am doing a lot better mentally than I was um, earlier in the week. I feel like getting back on track with my eating plan and all of that was really, really important for me. And I'm glad that... I forced myself to do that. It made me feel better about where I was going and what I was doing and feeling like I'm on the right track. That being said, when I weighed myself this week, I had gone from 290.3 to 291.5, which means I gained 1.2 pounds. Given last week with COVID and how I was eating and all of the stuff that I was doing, I mean, that's really, it's not a surprise to me. It's still disappointing, but it's not necessarily a surprise. Next week, I do have my follow-up appointment with my doctor to talk to her about the semaglutide compound. I still haven't heard back from the Walmart pharmacy, so I don't know if she just hasn't gotten the message about me wanting to switch or if she was wanting to wait until that appointment, but I plan on talking to her about the compound, the injectable, and see if it's just the compound in general, or if she's kind of on the same wavelength with me where we think that it's just the rapid dissolve and just kind of give, get her thoughts on that, see if she wants me to change anything else. But I am, I am encouraged that I have that to look forward to next week. And I'm hoping that she'll be on the same wavelength with me where, you know, we're trying something else with the injectable or if she has other ideas as to things that maybe we should try. Anyway, I appreciate you guys sticking through it with me once again, and I hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you have not subscribed, I would love for you to join my YouTube family. Please hit subscribe. If you want to be notified anytime my new content goes live, you can hit the bell. That's it for this week. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. We're on a journey. Looking back on the things that we've taken for granted But feels like we're learning to be better without